All right, let's look at this morning at the identity range error in merge replication. Um, you'll see the error usually will say the insert failed, it conflicted with an identity range check constraint. So a brief explanation, because I want to keep this quick, is that you are trying to make an insert into, uh, in this case, it this would be the subscriber, and the identity range that the publisher allows for is not large enough um, to handle the insert. So let's say that the identity range for the publisher is 10,000, which is the default, and the identity range for the subscriber is 1,000, which is the default. Well, what happens if you have a insert of 6,000 or 7,000 records? You're going to get this error because you just exceeded that identity range. Okay. So first question to ask uh, especially to your application developers. And by the way, this this right here, right off the bat, is the difference between a DBA and a data a database architect. Um, and I'm not bashing DBAs. I, I really like DBAs. I like working with DBAs. But the, the one drawback to them is they don't always think big picture here, and I have to draw them back to the big picture. So what's the purpose of the identity field in the application? Okay, let me give you an example. Most, almost every application developer I've ever talked to says, oh, well, our identity field is, is to um, to ensure uniqueness. Okay, guys, let me explain. Merge replication adds a GUID to the columns, right? That is unique. If it's to add ensure order, okay, well, is there a date time field? Okay, because you can use a row number trick with the date time field. Let me show you really fast. Okay, you'll see row number over order by price date ascending, date ID, price date, and price. This isn't a date time, but if it was a date time, I could order it that way. And you'll see that I can come up with the same thing. This is, uh, what is it, Altria Group? Um, their stock. But the thing is, is that we can use row number um, to create an ID if we have a date time field. So what is the purpose of the identity range? Usually it's one of those two things. Very rarely is it something else. And, and consider the fact that in, in some versions of SQL Server, uh, there is an identity range bug too. Okay. Second question to ask is, do both the publisher and the subscriber receive inserts or is it one or the other? Okay. If they, they're both receiving inserts, Yes, I mean, you're probably going to run into this issue. If it's just one or the other, then flip the subscriber to the publisher. Make sure that the publisher receives the insert so that it can allocate new ranges and the subscriber doesn't receive the inserts, okay? If you must use identities, and this again is very questionable whether you must stop, because most people are not using uh, identities, or at least for this part, uh, in the correct way. I mean, the, the reason why they're using identities can be achieved with other means. Uh, then make sure, first of all, that the identity data type is big int, number one. And number two, and make sure that the range um, the publisher and the subscriber uses is wide enough to handle the largest load. For instance, if you're only receiving two inserts a day and people are like, well, now, Tim, wait a minute. Why would I use big inserts if I'm only a big int if I'm only getting small inserts? Well, then you wouldn't be getting this error. Okay, You're not going to be getting an error if you're getting five records a day inserted. This, this error is only coming if you're getting big enough inserts, large enough inserts. So you're going to have to broaden your range. And understand it's going to skip, right? So if you need it perfectly ordered, it's not going to achieve that. That's why I'm saying there's probably better alternatives outside of uh, the identity field. Okay, and so you can also check there's a table on the publisher, which is uh, just do select star from publisher.dbo. Whatever the publisher database is, by the way, replace the database name with that and uh, ms merge underscore identity underscore range, and you can see. So the really one, uh, the really big solution here is to look at point one, which is what is the purpose of the identity field in the application. As a database architect, when someone wants to use a certain solution, there's nothing wrong with using a certain solution, but you need to take a look at the data types and you need to take a look at the structure and you need to take a look at what the application is doing. That is uh, a big key to all of this. Otherwise, they're going to be using the wrong stuff, right? And they're going to run into errors like this, and then you're just going to be chasing your tail all the time.